How's it going everyone? It is James here once again from James Films and today I have a really fun edit here where I put a Mount Rainier inspired mountain in the middle of this room. This had a lot of moving parts, a lot of different pieces of software, so I figured I would add a narration to kind of talk through my workflow and how I operated to create this. So very quickly you see me creating a landscape in a piece of software called World Creator. This is a paid software, but it's a lot of fun to mess around. You can really quickly get some great displacements of terrain. I'm planning on maybe making a Patreon at some point and putting some of these terrain displacements that I've made up on there for you to download, peruse, and mess around with, or maybe just release some for free uh, for you to mess around with. They're a lot of fun, really good, great results. I made a mountain and made some, uh, basically some masks for the different textures that I'll be adding in something called Mega Scans. So I take things over here into uh, Quixel Mixer and use a lot of these textures and um, to overlay onto my uh, 3D model. So this involves again a lot of experimentation, uh, kind of changing displacements around, kind of moving, rotating my textures to get them to map up well with the terrain displacement. And then I apply in those masks to add in some grass over here, to add in a little bit of snow capped mountain on top there. Uh, it's a lot of fun to just kind of play around with here and you get some really great results very quickly. I mean, that looks very realistic with just a couple clicks. I mean, we're only a couple minutes in here and I've already got a pretty good working mountain with some nice looking textures. I start in here instead of Blender. You can do this on Blender, but it's just easy enough to just pop in your uh, OBJ file that you generate from World Creator or your terrain displacement. You can see I've got the mountain already. Looks fantastic as an OBJ. It is a massive file size, so it kind of bogs down my computer a bit. But then I could just bring in that texture I made already from uh, Quixel. So that pops in really nicely. You can see, boom, already it looks pretty cool on my model. And again, this is really large, so it kind of bogs my computer down a bit. So I usually decimate my mesh just a little bit, especially for this one, since it's not really gonna be too large and be too detailed. It's kind of shrunk down a bit in this room that I'm gonna be making in a second. So that just helps me speed up my software and make it run a bit quicker. So I set my camera and then very quickly I like to block out my scene. So I'm adding in some walls here. I'm going to duplicate this one and then flip it to the other side. So now I have uh, two walls for a room and then I've got a nice roof here. And then this is just kind of a matter of just messing around with comp composition. You'll see me making many, many changes and iterations as I move through with this over the next couple of minutes with this scene. But again, just I love experimenting. I love just moving around. I like to make uh, things collections and then render their instances to kind of help so that you're not having so many uh, extra pieces of geometry in your scene to kind of bog down the viewport. Um, I'll end up actually deleting those mountains, but again, it just helps me kind of visualize the scene, block out the space. Uh, I make a, a little lake type thing <laughs> beneath it and then use uh, sculpting brushes to bring up some terrain around it so that you've got this little coastline almost around the mountain that's sticking out of the middle of this lake. I was again inspired by Mount Rainier here. If you've ever been out to Seattle, I definitely encourage you to check Mount Rainier National Park out or any of the national parks up there for that matter. But I was just particularly blown away by this mountain. In particular, it's got this beautiful lake uh, that you can uh, take a lot of photos in front of with the mountain in the background just looks stunning. So I wanted to kind of create that but in an interior space since I really miss hiking, I really miss getting out to the outdoors. Uh, and a lot of the national parks are just, I think, opening up again uh, for visitors. So hoping to maybe get out to some uh, soon on some road trips. So in the meantime, this is the next best thing is creating these things uh, in 3D. So I use uh, something called Scatter. It's a great add-on um, from the Blender store. Um, I've linked these in the description. You can see them and download this one. It's a paid one as well, but it supports a great creator who's doing some great work. And you can very quickly scatter some assets from uh, your own assets that you create or things that you can get from Quixel. I use some grass from Quixel and also some ones that are built into the add-on. Uh, so it really quickly builds up a really beautiful looking grassy scene that's realistic because everything is uh, just kind of scattered randomly in your scene and it looks more realistic. You don't have uniform clumps of grass. It's kind of more distributed evenly. I've got some objects that I've made from other scenes, like this is a uh, uh, shades that I can bring in from another model that I worked on before. And then I mess around with some VDB clouds here. Uh, this ended up not really working in my scene as much as I thought. I kind of just wanted the focal point to be the mountain um, instead of the clouds kind of around it. Um, so I ended up just kind of moving these around, playing around with them, seeing how they work, but I ended up taking them out of the scene. So 
I actually reboot Blender again here uh, because I use something called Botanic. It's a, another add-on uh, to bring in trees into my scene. So I've got some nice uh, coniferous trees that I'll place around here in my scene. Mount Rainier, one thing that really stuck out to me is just the how different it is as you get up into a higher elevation there. So when you're in the ground, it's, it's very uh, grassy, very dense trees. And then as you get higher up, it's very snowy with these really beautiful coniferous trees. So I kind of want to capture that by putting some of these coniferous trees in the scene um, and kind of having those scattered around. I messed with them kind of moving around in different points of the scene, but I ended up having them framing the camera a bit. So you have this bit of depth in the scene. Uh, so you're kind of almost looking through the forest into the room. I'll drop in a couple other assets here. This is a, a stool from Quixel. I'll play around with putting that in to make it seemed like you could be sitting there looking at this mountain, but I ended up not really liking how it looked for the scene, so I took that out. Again, 3D is all about experimentation. That's what's great about it. You can very quickly delete things, change your camera view, add in different lighting, add in different objects, uh, just with a click. So it's really fast, really efficient to move around, and that is why I love designing in 3D <laughs> compared to drawing in 2D, because it's much more forgiving in 3D. You can kind of make mistakes and delete things very quickly and move things around. So. Here I'm adding in like a little bit of a pathway, and I've kind of used this in a couple different renders I've made recently, where I kind of use the same rock and flip it, rotate it, and just because I've rotated it differently, it, it looks like a different rock, even if it's the same rock, and I can make a nice little pathway. So now it's rendered that took a couple hours to render because there's a lot of volumetrics I added in uh, to the scene. Probably didn't need to do that as much as that, uh, but hey, it, it looks great, I think. Rendered at 400 samples, so very little noise if at all you can't really notice anything at first glance unless you're really looking closely at corners so i bring it into photoshop here and i use something called the nick collection that you can see to add a kind of a, a certain look to the photo and again i've linked this uh, in the description this is still free to my knowledge i got it a couple years ago it's just nice to add some color toning that it can go around and kind of refine different things add a bunch of adjustment layers on top to kind of refine the colors bring it more towards the palette that i really like and that i'm going for kind of going for this like hazy look with some kind of nice orangish yellows, the deep greens, and then this kind of purplish snowy color from the mountains. And so this is the final image here. It really came out really nicely. And if you end up making any kind of renders based on some of the stuff I taught, please tag me. I'd love to see what you come up with or send it to me through Instagram. Have a fantastic day and see you in the next one.